Welcome to Daylight Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Scafree. And uh, essentially, we, we have this session here every Friday, 11 o'clock Central European Standard Time, to allow you, the audience, to ask uh, questions about Data Vault to Bono, data driven solutions, um, cloud computing, MPP stuff. Everything's allowed, right? Everything in that regard. Okay. Um, you can use the chat here if you, if you want to raise a question. You can use the QA function in the client. You can also just raise your hand. Don't misuse it, right? Because I would give you a voice. And um, you can also use a form, which I show you after today's session, where you can type in your questions, essentially. Um, if you receive multiple questions, I would be cherry picking. So uh, I, would, I, might, I might pick them according to some team or some um, some whatever uh, uh, requirement, essentially. And it should be time box. So a good question essentially fits into a, it can be answered within like 10, 15 minutes, roughly. If there would be no questions at all, I would talk about the cluster here. I didn't do much progress, so um, uh, better shoot questions, essentially. All right, we received one question. Let me just show it to you, one second. And that's about compression. Um, there you go. Okay, so this is essentially about um, compressing in uh, SQL Server. So it's, it's really a SQL Server question here. Because in, in some of the bootcamps, I talk about um, uh, compression options in, uh, in databases in general. It's not, not necessarily regarding SQL Server, it's in every database, essentially. In most databases, you have a compression capability. And there's different options. For example, in SQL Server, and this is a question about um, because I advise it essentially to turn on compression in SQL Server. And um, but there's also there's different types of compression, like column compression, page compression. So they get confused. What what should we use essentially? And in SQL Server, for example, you have different types of compression. For example, there's page compression, there's row compression, compress functions, and column store compression. So which one to use and which one to use when essentially? Um, let's start down with the row compression because that's really on the row. So let's say let's say you have multiple columns, and what what, what row compression does is it, re, it it optimizes the storage consumption of your especially fixed length attributes. That's number one. That's an input or the basis for page compression. So page compression always performs row compression in SQL Server, but page compression goes for goes further. It looks at redundant data inside your rows. So let's say you have let's say you have um, multiple rows with um, similar data. Um, yeah, same first names, for example. It would compress, compress this data, essentially. And then there's a compress function. Compress function is really a function that compresses the input, let's say a blob field, a bi var binary field, something, uh, use, using gunzip, gzip. Um, and you, there's an uncompressed function that you can use for uncompressing the data. So we use it for especially compressing large blob fields, essentially. And then there's column store compression, which reorganizes your pages and uh, especially um, compresses the data by columns. Now, which one to use? First of all, there's a good article that explains uh, especially how page compression, row compression works. And um, when you follow this link here, um, that's number one. The, the other thing is which one to use. So see, Microsoft advises to use, uh, uh, advises essentially the difference between row compression and page compression. They advise you to use page compression only if there's not many inserts, updates, delete on the rows. And if you primarily select data, which is perfect, that's what we're doing, right? So we don't use row compression, we use page compression, which includes row compression as well. That's number one, right? So we can easily go for page compression, compress the whole page, because that's essentially the, the our pattern, right? We don't update, we don't delete, we just insert rows and we um, select from the data. That's the main um, the main capability we use. So page compression would be my default for now, right? So in a SQL Server database, if I use that for a data warehouse, I always turn on page compression on all tables by default. It should be part of your generated pattern, essentially, for your tables. That's number one. That's the 101 pattern for your data warehouse now, right? Turn Always turn on page compression on all the tables. Because in the end, what happens is you, you store less data on disk, and when you query it out, you, can, you have to move less data from disk into memory. So it will become faster, essentially. Yes, there is some overhead to compress the data, and to uncompress it later, right? But this will the, the, the this will uh, the the this, the um, the performance of getting data from disk or the I/O performance that you need will essentially be um, less, and it, it will yeah, it's it's actually of advantage to say that. Okay. And then when do we use column store compression? Because because that's great for aggregating data. If you have let's say data you want to aggregate. Um, um, measure values, for example, in effect NAD or something. You we have measure values you want to aggregate by by some dimensions, essentially, right? That's where the column stock compression comes into play. 
So what I would do is on those tables, those entities in the data vault model, where you produce fact entities, where you do all these aggregations, that's where column store compression comes into play. And that's in the data vault. There's a pattern here as well, right? So in the data vault model, that's the bridge tables. Because bridge tables, we start, we aggregate a lot because we put views for the facts on top. And via the views, we execute queries against, against bridge tables. So those, you want to use column store compression, but also for non historized links and depend chart links. Those are also entities where we do a lot of uh, aggregations because in many cases, when there's no grain shift involved, you can just create a view for the fact entity on top of the non historized link directly or on the depend chart link. And yes, if there's a grain shift involved or more complex queries, you have to join multiple links and then aggregate by some um, uh, by the target granularity, pop the references, there's a bridge table involved. Those are the three entities where I would turn on column store compression, essentially. And for all the rest, let me think about this. For all the rest, I would turn on page compression. That's the basic pattern, essentially. Um, yeah, and block data, I'm not sure if you want that in the, in the um, data warehouse, if you have that. Then you would uh, compress the data. Need to need to double check to be honest. If page compression already compresses the data in blob fields, I'm not sure to be honest. But um, yeah, that's that's a basic idea. So page compression compression always. That's your one-on-one -on -one pattern. And for bridge tables, for non-historized link tables, and for um, depend chart chart links, you turn on columnar store compression essentially. That's the basic idea. And then you create a view layer on top, and that's it essentially. All right. So just to clarify this, how we work on this one. And yes, the question was, do we have experience with this? Yes, we do it all the time. So um, we always have compression enabled on SQL Server. You really wanted to have that. Um, and um, it's the same on other database systems. So um, in some systems like Postgres, there is no compression, so, so be it, right? Then you rely on the um, uh, satellite split for rate of change to reduce the, the, the storage consumption of your satellites, right? But if you have compression, I would not turn, use the um, satellite split for rate of change. I would just compress the data because that's essentially, yes, you have a lot of rows in all your satellites, but on disk, it gets much reduced. That's the basic trick, essentially. And then you can prevent, you don't have to join these additional satellites anymore, right? You just decompress the data and you're done, essentially. Let's see, that's the basic idea. So typically on a commercial database system where you have compression functions, I'm not sure why it's not in open source systems that much, um, maybe a licensing issue or something. But if you if you have a um, commercial database where you have compression capabilities, turn on compression, page compression for your general entities, and then um, don't split the setup anymore with the rate of change split. Just co compress the data and decompress on when you query it essentially to reduce the number of joins. All right, that's the that's the basic idea. If you have a question like this, you know this is what's coming. Uh, use this form here at sfr.ee slash DB Friday. That's where you can post your questions. Um, you can upload some pictures if you want of a whiteboard or team pictures if you want. Everything you upload might be shown here on the screen. So make sure it's HD essentially, right? Don't, don't produce these very large models. I can show them here. Um, there's also more webinars on Wearscape and DBT. They are once a month. The Data World Friday is, as the name implies, uh, every Friday, right? Every week. But these sessions are also great, so check them out as well uh, if you're interested in Wearscape and DBT. And check out the um, uh, Data Vault Innovators Community, DVIC. Um, that's what we did with Ignition, essentially, in Australia. Um, that's Dan's partner in Australia, um, where we essentially um, answer questions in the community, like forum. You can ask questions. We, we might, when we do pick some questions and answer them on a live stream as well, once a month. Um, yeah, join the community. We are active there a lot, actually, already. So the whole team at Scalefree, most of the team, is active at, at DVIC. Same for Ignition. They're also active on the forum. So I'm answering questions as fast as we can, essentially. Cool. Yeah, enjoy your weekend. Um, that's it, more or less, for me. Um, yeah, hope to see you next Friday. And um, yeah, have fun on the weekend, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on the number below here, and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.